Welcome back to Valley Moves and Shakers, and I'm very happy to introduce our first guest, Farron Montanez. Farron, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. Farron is a triple threat. She is a nutritional coach who specializes in introducing people to the vegan lifestyle. She also is an accomplished published author, and she also is a very accomplished athlete as well who runs, get this, ultra marathons. <laughs> so let's get right in. Thank you. So, um, veganism yes. is different from vegetarian, sure. right? Yes. And what 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 is the difference? So vegetarians refrain from eating animal flesh, so meat, and vegans refrain from all animal proteins, including dairy products and eggs, as well as meat. And what what uh, how did you become a vegan? Was it a, a slow progression from eat, being a carnivore, or was it a sudden change? Yes, I was definitely a, a carnivore, an omnivore, actually, as we call it. I loved burgers. They were my favorite foods. I was addicted to cheese and ice cream and all of that stuff. And then I started realizing, um, kind of after watching some documentaries, that maybe eating animal protein wasn't the best thing for me. So I went vegetarian at first. I was vegetarian for a year, and then after watching a few more documentaries, doing some research on my own, I decided veganism was definitely my path, and I went vegan and have experienced some amazing results because of that. So, If you had to tell someone who doesn't know, and that's in effect what you're doing right now, what are the, the benefits that one receives from a, from a vegan diet? Mm -hmm. What would be some of the things you'd like to, to, end, to well, point out? Personally, I used to get migraines. Even as a vegetarian, I would get migraines that would completely ruin my day. And I have not had a single migraine since going vegan. And I believe it's because I eliminated the dairy products. There's so many hormones in dairy products because it's the... It's the breast milk of a cow that is either lactating or pregnant. So obviously there's going to be some estrogen and hormones in there. Right. And that is why I think I continue to get migraines even as a vegetarian. So that was the one benefit that I saw. I also lost seven pounds right off the bat in a few weeks. And I've kept those pounds off since then. And I mean, I was an athlete. I was active. And just having any kind of weight loss like that, I didn't realize that I had the weight to lose, and now I just feel so much better and lighter. And and you, Farron, you felt so excited about the benefits that you received and that you noticed that you started very early on sharing your journey with others through a blog. Right. Is that right? Yes. Tell so us I, about I started my blog a year ago um, just to kind of chronicle my journey and to help others realize how easy it is to switch to a plant-based diet. And just kind of expressing the benefits of a plant-based diet. I mean, me personally, I had the weight loss and the absence of migraines, but there are so many other benefits to a plant-based diet. You can get rid of your heart disease. You can reverse heart disease, reverse diabetes, um, lower your risk of cancers. It's, it's just amazing when you eat what you're supposed to be eating the, the way that your body feels. So I definitely wanted to put this out into the world. I started my blog, spiritedvegan.com. And I share tips on transitioning and recipes that can help you along the way. So, And you went further, though, than the blog. Mm -hmm. You uh, have written on the subject, and you have become a coach for people who want to incorporate veganism into their lifestyle, correct? Yes. So I've written two cookbooks. One is a Thanksgiving cookbook, and it's all plant-based or vegan recipes that you can use during the holidays. And then my second book just came out about a month ago, and that's 31 Green Smoothies. That is the easiest way, I think, to transition into a plant-based lifestyle is by starting with just one meal a day. So starting with your breakfast, getting as much nutrients as you can first thing in the morning. So I did that, and I, I furthered my, my studies of plant-based nutrition and became a certified holistic nutritionist or a plant-based nutritionist. Now, and these books, they're available, you can get them at, on, on Amazon, Amazon or yes. other retailing sites? Yep, just Amazon. <laughs> so I'm going to run some questions by you. People who are skeptical of, of veganism, mm -hmm. and that would be probably the majority of us, yeah. right? <laughs> um, one of the things they might say is this, it's so expensive. Yeah, you eat more healthy, but it, I don't have the money to eat that healthily. What do you, right. what do you say to people like that? It's, 
it's totally a myth that it's more expensive to eat this way. Um, beans and rice are pretty much the least expensive things that you can find at a grocery store, and it's certainly a lot less expensive than meat. So basically what you're doing is just um, replacing your plant-based proteins with, sorry, replacing your animal proteins with plant-based proteins, and that is definitely much cheaper. Meat is usually the most expensive thing in your cart, so it's you can definitely eat for the, the same amount of money, much more food and much more nutritious food. Another, another, and I think you're probably going to tell me this is a myth too, another conception, misconception mm -hmm. probably, that uh, non-vegans have is, I'll become a social pariah. I, <laughs> I won't be able to go out and eat. I won't be able to socialize with my non-vegan friends, right. at least not at dinner parties and such. Mm -hmm. What do you say to that? Yes, I try to teach people that you just have to learn how to look at different menus. And there are so many more plant-based options and vegan options in Fresno that are amazing. You can go to Char Burger and get the Beyond Meat Burger. There are um, a couple vegan options at uh, Casa de Tamales, La Jaca, uh, Taco Truck, and... Uh, Oh man, there's just so many. There's so many plant-based options. And really, you can eat anywhere, absolutely anywhere, as long as you look at the menu and just make a special request. And if you really understand what falls within a, a vegan diet, pretty much right. at any restaurant you can find something. Oh yeah, that every you can restaurant eat. has vegetables. <laughs> yeah. We hope, right? <laughs> well, right. Yeah. Yeah. So um, another uh, myth that people uh, uh, probably carry with them when they think about this is, well, but it would be un difficult to have that sort of a diet and introduce my whole family to that. Right. And uh, I don't want to have to make special meals for myself and then have to cook basically twice for, for my family. And you I, I are obviously a, a parent and mm -hmm. you have a family. And, and how have you been able to incorporate that successfully into your family life? Right. So at home, we are completely plant-based and vegan. At home, I, I'm i the one who's cooking. I'm the one who's grocery shopping. So that's what I'm preparing for my family. Um, if we do have special occasions, birthday parties that we go out to, I'm not going to tell my kids, no, don't eat that. Um, I give them some freedom to choose. They're, they kind of choose to be vegetarian anyway. They still like to eat cheese and sometimes ice cream, but they, they really have never had a taste for meat. So it's not that big of a problem. But you can make meals... Um, that are plant-based, and then just maybe add chicken or beef to it. If your partner, your spouse doesn't want to go along with the veganism, then they can cook their own meat and add it to a meal that you make, and right. that's that's a compromise that you can come to. It gives you that flexibility. Right. And then, you know, the I guess maybe the 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 final uh, myth that people have is, well, you don't, it, it, you really need protein in mm -hmm. your diet. It's a the, one of the essential building uh, blocks of, of for a healthy person. And if you're right. a vegan, you ha where are you getting your protein mm -hmm. from? And like you mentioned, I'm an ultra marathoner, so right. obviously I do want to get my protein in. I know the right. benefits of rebuilding my muscles. And uh, yeah, so definitely protein is important, but there is a common misconception that protein only comes from animal products. Right. And that's simply not true. Animal products like meat, do they are a complete protein in that they have all of the nine essential amino acids that we need to get from our diet. But if you just combine a couple of plant-based proteins, like I mentioned earlier, beans and rice, that's, that becomes a complete protein because of the different combinations of amino acids. So as long as you're eating different types of plant-based protein like beans, lentils, tofu, tempeh, there's so many different options out there that don't have any cholesterol and saturated fat. Now, before we take our first short break and we move into the other aspects that I want to discuss, can you share with me how you've been able to successfully coach others into this lifestyle? Yeah, right now I'm just doing word of mouth referrals, but I am developing an online an online course that will teach meal prepping 21 meals plant-based that will last you the entire week and that is currently in the beta version. I have a small group of students who are currently taking the course as I'm developing it, and you can still get in on that. Go to my website, spiritedvegan.com backslash courses, and you can enroll in that, where I teach you how to transition to a plant-based diet, as well as meal prep, so. And the first step, it would be, for instance, if I wanted to have you as my coach, you would come to my house and basically throw all my food away. <laughs> 
Well, sometimes that, that I, can happen. I, I, I I'm mean, not gonna... I say that in jest, but <laughs> right. it's clo- not, that's yeah. not far from the no, truth. No, I'm not right. going to throw it away, but I will come right. to your house and point out, right. um, if we do one-on-one coaching right. sessions, I will come to your house and point out what mm-hmm. you can look for on those nutrition labels, right. what you would need to toss out, and mm-hmm. what you can keep and what you can get more of. Right. All right, well, we're going to take a short break, and we'll be back more with more Farron Montana. Stay tuned. Welcome back uh, to Valley Moves and Shakers, and we're going to continue on with Farron Montanez. Farron, I want before we talked about we begin talking about your ultra marathoning, and I want to certainly spend a lot of time on that. I did want to give you a chance to talk more about your writing because you are a professional writer, right? Right, and you've uh, been involved with many journalistic publications, mm-hmm. isn't that right? Can you tell us yes. a little bit? Yes, so. I've basically been a journalist for half of my life. I started writing for the back talk section of the Fresno Bee when I was like 14 or 15 years old, um, just doing like movie reviews and CD reviews. And I knew exactly what I wanted to do in life. I wanted to be a newspaper journalist. I went to Fresno State and got my journalism degree. And I, my most recent job was at the Fresno Bee. I was actually the editor of the Clovis Independent. So. All right. So now we're we're going to talk about the ultra marathon. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now, even a knucklehead like me knows that ultra marathon, it means longer than an actual marathon, right? right? Mm-hmm. How does one, or how did you more specifically build up the courage to start doing something like that? I surrounded myself with people who do the same thing. So it became normal. <laughs> I started with just running a 5k, went on to a 10k, a half marathon, a full marathon. And some of my friends and acquaintances were ultra marathoners, and I saw them doing it. I figured I could do it too, and tried it, and I I loved it. Fell in love with ultra marathoning. Now, I've been a little bit silly today, but I did want to, on a serious note, mm-hmm. bring out the you ran your first marathon in honor of the victims of the Boston Marathon bomb. Yes, my coach actually, Brad Castillo. Um, he coaches the Waskalies. The Waskali half marathon is coming up in September. And he was at the the Boston Marathon in the year of the bombings. And when he ran that, I just felt I felt really inspired to kind of show people that you can't bomb a marathon and discourage runners from running it. So I really wanted to be there at Boston. And I, I set a goal to run the Boston Marathon. You have to qualify to do so. So I knew I needed to get really fast. And I, my coach helped me along with that path. And it took me three marathons to finally qualify, but I did it. And the Boston Marathon is one of the very few marathons that you do actually have to qualify for. Mm-hmm. You just can't pay a fee and run it. Right. right. So yeah. it's rarely someone's first marathon. Right. No, uh, And it it's not be for a first. casual <laughs> running. No. <laughs> so what's the longest ultra marathon race that you've run? The longest race I guess would be a 100k which is 62 miles but I did run a 24-hour race locally it was in Sanger and I ran 104 miles in in 24 hours that's flabbergasting (laughs) to I mean I don't know what to 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 say that's amazing thank you (laughs) and um do you get the 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 adrenaline rush uh that people talk about from running the runner's high oh, where yeah. you just it, it's almost pains you to go without running yeah you definitely get a runner's high from all of the endorphins that you get when you're on a run so I think that's part of the reason why we're so crazy to do it <laughs> and you know not to get overly personal but you're you're a mom you're a military wife you've got two beautiful children and obviously ultra marathoning and training for that takes time yeah how do you manage to fit all that in I wake up really early I wake up at <laughs> 4:25. I get to Woodward Park with the rest of my running group, the Waskalies, by 5 a.m. We start running at 5, and we're done by about 6.10, 6.15. And then on weekends, we do longer training runs, which can last from one hour to five hours, depending on what we're training for. So, so here comes a segment of my show where I like to give my guests an opportunity to talk directly to the audience. Okay. I back away and just give the floor to completely to you. So here's the person I want you to talk to. The person out there who uh, maybe has some health problems, maybe isn't getting as much exercise as they know themselves that they should, Mm -hmm. and just generally speaking, have not taken control of their life and their health. What What do you say to somebody like that to motivate them? Oh man, so I think the 
the biggest strategy that I can offer is to surround yourself with people who prioritize your health their health that way it becomes normal and you want to prioritize your health so for instance I joined my running group and I'm surrounded by people who run and it has become a normal thing for us um, if you want to eat healthier then don't hang around with people who don't eat well hang around with people who eat healthy that way you're inspired and you see what they're eating and you want to eat the same thing um, if you're antisocial, you're an introvert, just fill your news feed on Facebook and Instagram. Follow people who are inspiring and motivational and who post fitness pictures, pictures of them running, pictures of them working out, their nice meals. You can follow me on Instagram at Spirited Vegan. I post all of everything that I eat. So you can see the colorful bowls that I have and it might inspire you to eat a little bit healthier. Farron, I can't thank you enough for being on the show. And I know you've got a great book of Thanksgiving recipes. I hope when the holidays get nearer that you'll come back and join us and, and, and talk about some of those recipes. And I know we've got some great photos of, of your, uh, your running, and, and probably some of them have uh, been shown, but uh, you obviously are, have accomplished a lot. And, you know, you're justifiably proud, and it's great to have you here in the Valley. Yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate that. All right. Thank you so much. We'll be back in a little bit with our next guest.